Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the Depth Dragon again and we're going to be prepping him for paint and making him a nice custom base. Scruffy Crow! Okay, so as you saw in the last video, if you didn't, I'll put a link in the description. Um, we've got this guy all printed out uh, and he fit together pretty nicely with minimal uh, work. But there are still some gaps, sort of there, uh, around his waist there, uh, and his tail. Uh, but nothing you wouldn't get if this was a, a resin kit I'd bought from a shop. Uh, overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with how easy it went together. I've already done a little bit of modification, and I've taken the um, sort of locking bits off his feet, where they would go into the base. So his feet are now flat, uh, and that was pretty straightforward. I just uh, sawed those off with a jeweler's saw. Uh, and we've done a bit of work with a file to sort of move that down, but it doesn't really need to be because I'm going to put something else for him to stand on. I guess the first job, I'm going around the file here, and I'm just going around double checking we don't have any more marks or uh, bits from like support connections or anything uh, that we need to sort out. Um, but actually, he is looking startlingly clear any of that stuff. Okay, for the next stage we're going to get my green stuff. I'm going to cut a fairly large chunk. And I've got my favourite sculpting tool here, uh, which is a sort of curved back little spoon shape. I've also got this uh, rubber ended tool, uh, which I like to use for smoothing. Uh, and I tried to buy some more of those, uh, but I accidentally bought these huge ones. Um, so we'll have to see uh, what that's like, if that's any use or not. Okay, so then starting with a sausage of green stuff, uh, the aim of the game is to make these gaps disappear. So I want this join to look like all the rest of them. Uh, so I'm going to start here. Uh, we are going to do all the way around. We need a starting point. So I'm going to start on this little gap with my sausage of green stuff and the metal tool. And I'm just going to prod this into the gap and also what I'm doing while I'm doing this is I'm sort of smoothing it onto both this level and the top here and we're just moving this along and then when I run out I'm just going to make another little sausage okay so now we've got that band all the way around uh, roughly in place. I'm going to spend more time now just sort of smoothing into the two sides like I said uh, and also when we've got a line like this I'm going to draw that in, draw that one in and I'm applying quite a bit of pressure here because we're sort of smearing that out because we don't want an obvious line where this starts and this is the sort of thing that takes as much time as you want to give to it uh, but the more time you spend neatening this up and filling these gaps, uh, the better it's going to look. And obviously the ideal is for you not to be able to tell where the gaps are at all uh, once we've got a layer of paint on this. Okay, so once we've got it all into the shapes you want, uh, like under here, it still looks a lot like green stuff. And this is where the magic happens. We get the rubber tool and I'm just rubbing this across everything and this will, I think, smooth out all of those little bits, like the tool marks, all the bits that give away that it's green stuff, any little flaky bits, anything like that, that'll all be smoothed away. Okay, and that is my first join done. And I'm pretty happy with that one. So I'm basically just going to replicate that on every other join. Um, so to a lesser extent around the legs, and then we've got the one there, and then the one around his neck. Um, I said the shoulders, they've done quite a good job of sort of blending them in. Um, so that, yeah, they're less of a worry. But even here, I'll just sort of run a bead down this uh, joint here, just so we can kind of hide the fact that it was two separate parts. I said the neck's gonna be an important one. And then the back of the head, there's not a lot I can do, that's already fine, uh, but obviously under the chin it's going to be quite a key one as well. So that's probably going to take me, I don't know, an hour or two, 
uh, to get around all that. So I won't bore you by filming that. So I won't bore you by filming that in its entirety. One last little bit to green stuff. So this is where uh, one of the supports failed on the printer. And then it dug into my print and made these uh, three little grooves. But rather than reprint this whole tail section, which uh, if I recall was one of the, the longest bits to print, uh, just because of the, the height of it, the way it sits on the printer, I'm just going to fill those gaps with a bit more green stuff. So this time, instead of a sausage, we're going to start with a rough ball, um, the same size as the hole. I'm probably going to scrape a lot of this off, so I'm just going to start by flattening it down. And then I'm going to run my sculpting tool in the direction of the scale. And I'm going to try and remove some of this excess. The green stuff's actually still a little bit too sticky at the moment. I could mix in a bit more blue, which is probably what I should do. Um, but also, I find green stuff does get a little bit easier to work with for stuff like this uh, a few minutes after it's been mixed. I'd say this is a little bit harder to get right than gap filling, but that's the sort of thing we're aiming for. Uh, and what I'll actually do as well is once this is completely cured, I'll just run over that. Just gently, uh, just gently give it a tickle with a file uh, and we'll take away any sort of bumps and lumps that I don't really want. And once again, hopefully after that's painted, uh, you won't even be able to see that there was marks there. Okay, so the next part Okay, so the next part is going to be at the base. Uh, so uh, this came with a sort of scenic base that I didn't print because I didn't want the sort of material of the dragon itself and the material of the base to be too similar because I've experienced that problem before with models. And it makes the painting that little bit more of a challenge when you're trying to get like a nice contrast between the base and the monster. Uh, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some of these cork mats. These are uh, heat from Ikea. Uh, they're lovely cork mats. They are about, I'd say they're almost exactly a centimetre wide. And yeah, I use them for quite a few bits, especially building up uh, bases like this, uh, because you can use them as a sort of filler uh, for when you can do a nicer outside, or you can get quite a good rock texture out of some of this material. I've also got some of this uh, cork sheet, which is like a pinboard sheet with the adhesive removed, uh, if I need to do any other little bits. So, as we look at this guy here, uh, so if we put him sort of vertical, we've got quite a bit of building up to do before we get to the first foot, which is this one. Um, so I'd say, sort of two or three layers. So I think I'm gonna start with something a bit like that. We chip it up more when we get there. So we have to be conscious that his tail wants to go all the way down. And then we've got a second piece, and I'm just going to layer that up roughly here. And that's kind of where we want to be for the first level, I think. I might even go up another one. Um, I'm removing all this nice smooth uh, outside because we don't want. Anything too smooth there. Cool. And now the tail's not just resting on the floor. And then I'm going to build up on the other side. So we've got this foot supported. Uh, probably put something under this claw. And yeah, try and make it look like it's a natural pose. Uh, and the dragon has you know, posed himself around the rock rather than we've made the rock fit the dragon. Okay, uh, we're gonna stack a bit like this, still separate. Uh, I'm gonna need some super glue uh, just to quickly get all this stuff in place. A quick word about the wooden board that it's on. Uh, this was the back of a uh, picture frame uh, that got broke when I was moving house, an A2 one. Um, so and I've just cut out this, uh, the size that I wanted. It's not a standard size, it's 10 by 15. Um, so it's fairly large and sort of yeah, not standard for any games. But I want to go use this guy for Oathmark. I wanted it this big. So yeah, I think I want him on a nice big base so we can always get troops to all the sides. Um, obviously that's why it's got this slot because that used to be where you 
to put the clips, one of those sort of clip frames. Uh, but that's fine because we all we have to do is put the rock that way around and you'll never see it again. Sandy. Okay, so um, let's try and see if we can get this top down. Uh, I've got him sort of square to the base uh, and I've got this lump built. Um, so the tail wraps around the side, this claw is there and the feet are standing on two of the platforms. But obviously this doesn't look particularly pretty. Um, so next thing is to get this arranged on the base exactly where we want it. Uh, and then we're going to glue it down to the base. And then it's going to be a case of sort of uh, chiseling away where we don't want material. And then we can use all these scraps. We can glue these in uh, where we do want the material and sort of rebuild it all back up uh, and make it look a little bit more natural. Okay, so there's a load more of the cork added. Uh, it's wedged and stuffed. Uh, we used a lot of the sort of off cuts. There's a curve that would have been in there. Um, and there's a, another one of the smooth bits. Just ramming all that in. It's another bit of the thinner stuff. I'm actually just going to use that as a sort of bit of a cap on there. Because we're using super glue, this all melts together. And this is already, you know, pretty sturdy, but it doesn't weigh a lot. So if obviously we're using cork. I've also put thought into this, so we've got like a, a nice gentle slope up there. We need to keep this bit flat because that's where his foot goes. Uh, and then we've just done a little rock there to try and measure it out, look a bit more natural. And I think I might uh, have a look on the 3D printer, see if I can find uh, something for in here, uh, or like a little treasure chest or something. Uh, maybe some sort of little cave troglodyte or something uh, in here um, to sort of fill out the base, uh, make some little interesting bits. Uh, but anyway, while this is drying, well, as it dries, uh, I'm just going in and I'm just taking this sharp sculpting tool and just chipping away. And the th trick is, I found, is if you sort of dig through the layers, you can kind of merge them. So we're trying to avoid this sort of uh, obvious step layered effect. They're saying that rock does look like that. But yeah, I'm trying to scruff that together so we you can't tell where one layer starts and the next begins. And you can even use these little bits you're poking off now. Um, so if I just splurge some glue into this hole like that, and then we just get some of these chunky off cuts, ram them in there, just force it in with the sculpting tool. Uh, in a few seconds, that'll have, that glue will have soaked all in and that'll become one solid section and we'll be able to uh, chisel it away like we are doing with the rest. This is actually a lot of fun. Uh, I've done this a couple of times before on bases um, and I really enjoy doing it. Okay, so I think we are there. So I've obviously left flat parts for the feet to sit on. I've also left other flat parts like here and here because obviously if we only had flat parts where the feet were set, that would look like I'd only made flat parts for the feet to sit on, I think. Um, so I've left them other flat parts. Uh, and I'm going to texture them the same way as I'm going to texture the base, which is just going to be my regular uh, sand. Uh, so yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that as an overall look. Uh, there might still be a little few little chunks I might fill in. But I could sit and uh, sort of finesse this all day, so... Uh, I have to draw a line under it at some point. Uh, but I think that looks suitably rugged and rocky. So next up I've got some of this uh, wood adhesive. Uh, this dries a little bit harder than uh, my regular PVA that I use. Uh, it's also a little bit more of a pain to work with. So I'm gonna pop uh, some into this little dish. I'm gonna add a bit of my paint water. Let's rub it to hand. I bet you can see where this is going. I'm literally going to paint this 
all over. And this is going to keep in all those little crumbs and granules, anything that is not being grabbed by the super glue currently. And it'll also make this surface uh, a bit less crumbly uh, and handle a bit more wear. And this should just soak right in. It'll also soften some of this cork effect. I've got it fairly thick. Um, and I think make it look a bit more rock facey. Uh, so I'm basically just going to paint this all over and then I'm probably going to have to leave it a day or so to dry. If I was making terrain uh, using a similar method, I would probably mix this also with a bit of sort of black craft acrylic uh, because then you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. You can start undercoating and at the same time sealing. And there we have my big goopy rock formation. As I said, just remove any excess because anywhere it's pulled, uh, that really will take an age to dry. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to leave that at least overnight. Uh, might try and leave it in the sun. I don't want it to dry too fast. I don't want the board to warp at the bottom. Um, but yeah, that's going to take a fair few hours to dry. To be honest, the amount of time that's going to take to dry is probably going to be similar to the amount of time it's going to take to uh, unsuper glue all this uh, cork off my finger ends and actually clean my super sticky desk back up. Okay, so that is all dried now, and this thing is rock solid. Uh, even just holding it, it feels just sort of tougher. Uh, yeah, that's not going anywhere. And the base hasn't warped, that's still nice and straight, which is good. Uh, so now I am going to stick the big lad on. This is the bit I'm dreading. So I'm going to do a few dry fits, make sure everything still takes him. It still looks the way we want. Specifically this claw here, I built up underneath it uh, to make that look particularly good. Uh, so I have to make sure that that's all fitting in nicely still. I'm going to be fairly level with the glue on his feet because those two feet are going to be the main points where he is stuck down. I have considered some sort of pin, uh, but actually I think that that's going to be enough contact points really, two feet. Okay, I've left this overnight to fully cure and I am now confident that these two parts are firmly stuck together. But the next step will also increase that. Okay, so everything is dry now. Uh, I am confident that he is stuck on. I've wedged a little bit more cork under this foot. Um, I'm happy with the way that's sort of ended up looking. Um, so we're almost there. I was thinking about adding some scenic bits and pieces. Uh, I even dug out a little goblin uh, and found some treasure chest options um, for going in the front here maybe. And then what I, what I realized is that that would very much scale this model. Currently there's nothing about this model that tells you uh, how big it is. So currently this you know, dragon could be fighting dwarves at this scale or even sort of knights down at this scale. And you know, even though that looks crazy, I mean, if you look at the old artwork and this picture I take, it kind of kind of works. Um, and actually I've changed my mind, I'm gonna keep that idea. Um, so that means we're just onto the finishing touches now. So for this, I've got a nice big flat brush. I'm going to take some regular PVA and I'm going to imagine any flat surfaces, so obviously the bottom of the base, uh, any of these little ledges, anywhere else that would take um, some dirt, as, it, as we can imagine it sort of fell down and wasn't washed away sideways um, by my imaginary currents, um, I'm going to layer on with some glue. So 
So all around there, for instance, and then on this little ledge, right down to the edge. And a little nook and cranny there. And obviously on top of here, we'd ever end up with a little bit of soil. This will also help glue these feet in. Once we've got set sand and glue like this all around the feet, there'll be no real chance of it going anywhere. Okay, so once I've got all those uh, bits that I want covered, anything that I thought looked flat, Gonna pop the whole base in this takeaway container. It doesn't really fit near enough. I'm going to start with some of this ornamental grit. This is the sort of stuff you'd use on the bottom of a fish tank, maybe. Uh, I'm just going to sprinkle some of this around some of the rocks we have. The tray wasn't really big enough, so I'm just going to use this month's uh, miniature war games magazine. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with enough grit on there. I'm now going to use my favourite bird sand. So this has got a little bit of eggshell mixed in with it. So I added some texture, uh, and it's quite coarse. I'm just going to pour this everywhere. So everywhere I had a layer of glue before, I've now got a layer of, of at least a couple of mil of this sand. And I'm really gonna leave this now overnight for it to sort of suck all that sand in, for it all to soak into the PVA, make a nice hard shell. And that mixture of the sand and the glue will also help stick any feet on wherever they need to go, uh, and sort of bring everything together. Okay, so this has been left overnight. And I'm just gonna pour the sand back off here. I'm gonna use this big fluffy brush to get in there and remove anything that's loose. And the reason we did it on the magazine was so we can just use all that. With minimal mess on my desk. Okay. Um, there's a few bits we want to clean up. When I was doing the PVA, we got some bits on the claws here, but that should just pop straight off. Same on the knee here. Okay, I'm happy I've got that all cleaned up. I've like I said, we'll just run the back of the knife around the back of here as well, and then just make sure we straight with a bit of sandpaper. And we've cleared up all the sand off the dragon. Um, so yeah, all together we started with filling all these gaps. So they are all nice and smooth. We fixed the uh, blemishes on the tail. Uh, once that's painted, I don't think you'll be able to see them at all. Uh, we've built the custom base out of cork, textured it with some sand, and there we are. He is ready for his uh, under, first undercoat. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.